Welcome back, everyone, to the Zero K Lobster Roll Series Week Nine. I'm your host Dominic, or Shadow Fury, whichever you prefer. Joined by Google Frog, and we are into the loser semifinals between. Or wait, no, my bad. Losers quarterfinals. I misread the bracket. Try that again. Losers quarterfinals. Because apparently, Challenge has actually fixed the way they mark brackets in these days. Anyway, loses quarterfinals. And we are going to be watching FSC and Steel Blue, who have already... No, no, that scene. No, 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 no. That scene. Let's see, they have banned... What are they banned? And on Amblewood. Scaryland, Amblewood. And Sparkles. Sparkles Reef. Vantage, Scaryland. Okay, we got a weird set here. We're on Ravaged. All ravaged. right. Weird set, but it all works out to Ravaged. All right. So Ravaged, which has been kind of the most popular map, I think. Certainly one of the maps of the games on stream has been the most popular map. That much I know for certain. Alright, so we have everyone in and setting up. Steel blue going for spiders. I expect I expect it's gonna be spider mirror. As is usually the case, and indeed that is happening. Yeah, both spiders. You can do both some other things. The rover actually works. Sometimes. Yeah. Depending on I, the kind of spiders you're facing. Yeah, I just think the most players are going, well, spiders are the safe option, so I don't want to lose. Let's just go with the safe option. Even though yeah, rovers would work. I think Jump Bot would have a chance if played properly. But spiders are pretty easy. Like, spiders are a clear favorite. Anyway, everyone's just going for scouting. Steel Blue wants a little more. No, both players. Also, scouting into economy. Nothing, nothing too special. Steel Blue, however, will get a little more scouting. Bit more economy for FFC, though. Yep. Which he's commander right out. Yeah, Steel Blue... Surprisingly, too, because their commander is easily defensible. They're concerned about getting a flea into their base. Just taking out everything, so... I mean, they got the Lotus now. A little unnecessary if he's not going to go for it, but... Steel Blue just wants to make sure. But yeah, you're right, Google probably... Steel Blue is definitely going to have a little bit of... Slight struggle economically. Same time, though, they could go into FFC's base and start wrecking up the place. Like, yeah, they actually skimmed a them. lot on flea. Yeah, the flea defense is not there, and the venom is about to be built, so it's. Yeah, a flea comes around and finds a mechs. And, uh... Two fleas finding mechs. Well, one of them is going to be hard pressed just because the lotus, or the, the lotus, the venom is there. There is no Lotus, that's the thing. But I guess it kind of makes sense, because, you know, Steel Blue is trying to defend against this exact thing, so it makes sense they'd think to use it. Okay, but the Venom takes it out. Still, though, takes out a Max. Steel Blue takes basically takes the metal advantage back in their favor. A good job, then. Wait, what the... Is that... Oh, Spider Plate. Yeah, okay. Steel blue going for that mass venom play. Or well, going right into more spiders, whether they are. Well, that's true, but mass venom play has kind of been the opening for spiders this whole tournament. No surprise, they got they're quite strong these days. Well, it is the raider, or as much as spider has a raider. The raider reads lightning riot spider. It's an interesting way to spell raider. Maybe the description needs updating. Slower than a raider, but 
That's true. Spider's pretty slow all around. If you want map control, you're probably going to have to make a few Venom. Yep. Well, at any rate, Steel Blue does have the... Does that advantage over here, over the eastern little plateau? FFC sort of lacks radar. Doesn't see these two Venoms near his base. Yeah, FFC's radar coverage has been a significant issue. I, you saw the game with Zed, they fought Randy. They would have won them if they had better radar coverage and knew what they, when they could have attacked. But FFC has been really skimping on radar. And unfortunately, it's been costing them. Yep, speaking of, them now. <laughs> speaking of, still be able to get a free Venom. Just catching one out. Possibly two. Oh, yeah, two. Two free Venoms. Maybe. Yeah, that's not how to use your units. Second yeah. one comes in. Mm -mm. But again, like, there was just no way that FC had. <laughs> they hadn't radar. They didn't have any radar. And now Fourth it's just, one coming in. Oh. Three units for the price of zero. Steel Blue making absolute bank on attrition. That's... Okay, Ephesus throws in the towel. That that was game. That was it. Okay. I mean, that's... That's understandable. That was a lot. That was a lot of army loss, but... Like I said, FFC is not building radar, and it's costing them. It just cost them the position they placed in the tournament. Because they wouldn't have lost the radar... The Raiders, or the... Raiders wouldn't have lost the venom if they knew that the other venoms were there because of radar. So yeah. Yeah, but you send them in one at a time. That's a bit what you get. No, there was there was something in it was a pair versus a pair if I recall correctly. It's just that it's just that Steel Blue had no, the flank was, on one. It was one one was sent in and then got killed, and then the other one arrived and got oh, killed. Oh yeah, okay, fair enough. Arrived. Yeah, the, the positioning basically killed. Steel Blue had the flank on it because the way they were set up and coming in, and so it ended up being yeah, one at a time yeah. effectively. Well, Steel Blue could. There was enough space between them coming in that Steel Blue could fight one at a time. Yeah. Which you can't usually do if you're using Venom. That's because Venom true. makes the unit stop. You can't actually retreat. You can't do a fighting retreat because you will stop the opponent's unit. So it takes some work. But Steel Blue uh, managed to make that work. What's happening? Has that other game ended yet? I don't know. Pootus has uh, needs an opponent. Pootus does need an opponent. What do we have here? It looks like it might just be starting. Wait, what? Well, Bakarasu against... No, no, that's been uh, going on for a while. It must have just finished. Uh, it was... But that's just finished. Yeah, it was going so, on for a while. The next game could be just starting. Yeah, it looks like. I think we're going to be getting... Buddhist is already here, so I think we're just going to have the next round. I don't know what... Okay, it looks like Bakahasu won the point to the bracket. Okay. Yes. Yes, they did. Sorry, I keep talking over you. <laughs> Alrighty, so oh, The we game's have... been killed. So the room's been killed. Okay, we're we're good. So we're back into map bands. We are. Where are we at here? Well, Pudis has the first choice. Horse whoever wins this fights Steel Blue, and then fights Golda. Then, I guess fight whoever, and then I guess Golda fights Randy, unless someone else can take it. Oh, the bracket's wider. That's where he fights Godo. Hmm? Yeah. Oh yeah, the bracket goes way past. Loser's final continues in yeah. quite a ways in. Yeah, because Challenge is actually naming their brackets properly now. That is nice. Certainly convenient. Sapphire and Anvil... Sapphire, Anvil. No surprise Zed. there. Zed, Oath, good. Could do without another grindy game like that. 
I expect to be Ravage unless Ravage gets banned. Scary Land is banned, so we're probably going to be unravaged. Though Vantage is another option. It's up to Pudis what they want. Oh, never mind. Black Bats gets to choose. Scary Land. Scary Land's out. So yeah, Ravage, Vantage, and Sparkles Reef are the options. Buddhist apparently hates Anvilwood and Scaryland. With a passion. They've <laughs> been. So we are on Vantage. Good choice. Okay, okay, never mind. Sorry. Crow pointing out that they actually went through and made sure the names were correct. Thank you very much, Crow. Crow is the tournament organizer. So they're, I mean, doing good work. So yeah, good job, Crow. Thank you very much. Okay, now, for those of you not, not familiar, Challenge will by default label the loser's finals as loser's semifinals and winner's finals as winner's semifinals with the grand finals just being finals or winner's finals. It's really silly. It's like whoever wrote the default names for double elimination tournaments and challenge. I don't think they were thinking of double elim. I think they just did single elim and then ported them over and didn't bother to check. Right, or it's some kind of extension of it. Uh, clearly, yeah. But it's like that's not how double elim tournaments naming works at all. But yeah, no, thank you, bro. I question your decisions sometimes, but this is not one of those times. Yeah, that was a weirdly backhanded compliment, I'm sorry. You seem to have Rover and Cloak. And I'm happy this makes sense. I mean, Rover's a little risky because of the hills, but I could see it working. Yeah. And Pudis already thinking about Imp as a counter to Rovers. Are we finally going to see the campaign can canonical counter to, Rotor, for, to Rovers from Cloakybots? Oh, when they run on the Scorch as fast. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I was thinking, because yeah, the campaign literally teaches speed. you, in the Adamantine Mountain level, use Imps and Glaives. If you want to fight Rovers, use Imps and Glaives. And everyone's like, no, screw that. I'm just going to go with the slow reavers. And I'm just like, okay, I guess that they're close enough, but you lose map control. I don't know if it teaches you do, to do that exactly. Well, it taught me to do that. It says, that here's a thing you can do. You've got to introduce the imp at one point. May as well introduce when it's quite good. I hadn't thought of it that way. Now I feel weird. It's like... You had this idea that's like, yeah, that's a great way of using imp. And a great way of fighting fighting rovers with Blokies. Yeah, well, for what it's worth, it's it is still a good option. Prudus doesn't oh, okay, he's building going for the greedy high energy of the hill. <laughs> yes. Wow, yeah, point nine to start with, that is that is some good energy. And send it a uh, conjurer is going right over there towards the rocks as well. So now he's just got glaives to defend this base with, which he has enough, and he's got more coming out. Yeah, Bakovac is not really going for a major assault. They're just trying to scout out, see what's being built, get some idea of what Pudis is up to. Keeping those glaives at the base is pretty useful. Oh yeah, that too. Bakovac wants to keep themselves open to expand themselves. Ah, uh, he spotted the Contra, though. Yep. Lost one of the Scorchers. The, the Contra... Oof. Yeah, I... That's not great. Nope, that Contra is done. Tried to make it back around. Oh, no. Oh, I see what I was trying to do. I was trying to go up the hill. The Scorcher couldn't follow it, but... Not quite fast enough, I'm afraid. So, Pudis... Quite greedy. Now yeah. going into a sort of Randy style fencer scorcher. 
Oh, yeah. I guess Mask Glaive, I like it. I really like it. And it's going to be doing a lot of work. Glaive can find quite good angles on, on this map, though. Oh, that's true. Yeah, but I feel like once you, once you get the numbers up, yeah, the Scorchers are... Yeah, a bunch of numbers. They're flanking out the Glaives, and the Fencers are just constantly raining down damage. But that does mean Pudis has a bit of a timing they can attack from, which is exactly what they're doing right now. Trying to defend against the Scorchers, but mainly going in for the assault at what they're thinking is a good timing. Unfortunately for them, it doesn't look like there's a whole lot of expansion where they expect there to be, and where there is expansion, it's pretty well defended. We've got simultaneously, they're trying to move Glaze up to that hill, which is a good spot to attack from, which uh, Rover can't. Really you. It. Oh, and Bakahasu knows that an imp exists, but doesn't know how to find no. it. No, yeah, knows it exists, does not know where. Still, that's giving Pudis room to breathe. Allow him to go forward, reclaim a bit. Wow, that commander is being really aggressive. Although to be fair, it's baiting up Bakahasu's commander. Six glaze won't be enough for the for that particular commander type with the drone support. Twelve glaives might be though. Twelve glaives, yeah. Oh, and scorchers. They are all on radar that now. That's true. Yeah, that. It so is a guardian commander though. Just it is, oh. but that's not enough. That's not enough. The no. scorchers defenders are not in position. That commander is done. Bakuats. Oh no, it's not. What really? Oh, Buddhist is trying to play this He's so carefully. Don't lose the glaives. All of his units. Yeah, unfortunately, that did happen. Unfortunately, I don't know if that was worth it. It's it's going to be tricky. Bakuatsu does lost. have a counterattack opportunity right now. There. Yeah, Bakuatsu, if he has the presence of mind while he's doing this thing with his scorches on, in the base, to just push the commander with fences, soften it up, and then go in with scorches. Yeah, that will be a revenge. And that is not happening. Bakuats is playing a little defensively, giving Pudis room to breathe, room to get out. I keep well, saying room to breathe. He's messing around in the base, which is useful, but he needs to send in his other army as well. Both armies need to be converging. Yeah, unfortunately, that's not happening. So now I mean, Bakuats really, really needs energy more than anything. Economically. Mm hmm. They're. Oof, and then I'm, I'm in sure. a great position of getting more of that. The one mason that's doing any real expansion work is now dead. The only other mason remaining is, well, it's in the base. It's helping out again production uh, going, that's imp. it. There's an imp going in. Yep, cloaked to imp. Those scorches. And the three of them go down. Oh, no, all four! Oh, nice! Well played. That could be uh, it. It's 12 seconds. The rest okay, the there's time. There's I don't time. think that many fences even kills that many glaives. No, it doesn't. You, you would need... I think you need about as many fences as there are glaives if you don't have Scorcher support. Oh, no, the Scorchers just get out of there. Though. Oof. Now this commander's coming in. I and don't those see it, Scorchers are now damaged and close to glaives. Can they kill it? Uh, the commander's going to go Maybe. down. The fence is going to go down in response, though. Maybe. No, that commander's oh, no, dead. Another scorch coming what? South. What? 180 HP. So yeah, much for dead. The what just what percent is up that? Those fences. It's like four percent HP. Last second save from Pudis right there. Oh my goodness, that was that was a nail biter. Sheesh. Yeah, sad thing is that commander could have been dead two minutes ago when it was by itself against four scorches and four fences. Yeah, that was... Just after Black Hostage Commander went down. But now and... Pudis has the Glaive numbers again. I after th trading them all into that commander. Yeah, not to mention all the reclaim from here. The caretakers have to take the reclaim. The factory's not really set up to use it, though. No. Well, it's got a caretaker. It does, but it already has 20. Yeah, but other units are going to be doing things. That's true. That's expansion true. Expansion around the south, etc. Yeah, and so far, Pudis' commander's repair is the main priority. Same time, though, Glaives trying to find some purchase. You have to get rid of 
Well, some, okay, be able to get rid of another mason. That's a nice little raid there over to the north side of the map. South side remains pretty well contained. The Bakwatsu really doesn't have anything to play with here. And Pudis, there's that reclaim. Uh, is, please build more power structures. Bakarasu need... has units, but they're sort of underdeveloped. They're, they're slower than the glaives. They have to be out on the map. It's like a chess analogy. He needs to right, yeah. move his things out. He's got them, but they need to be moved out. Well, and to be fair, metal-wise, it is dead even. Well, metal-wise, you have to have a look at what's going on with the reclaim. Yeah, Pudis is rapidly building up to take advantage of the reclaim, but most of it got accessed away, Pudis unfortunately. Pudis has more expansion and has used up a lot of most of their reclaim now. But Bakawasu isn't really close to dealing, getting their reclaim either. There's that dead commander with the glaives on the south, which Pudis has a glaive patrolling right. nearby to just to check whether that is going to be used. I mean, solid thing to keep patrolling for, and hopefully if Pudis does get... I mean, if Pudis goes for that, they're going to have more of a chance to take advantage of it, but they still could use another Bakarasu's caretaker in their army going off to the side of the map. It's probably worthwhile killing these glaives efficiently. Does clean but up. Now his army's on the other side of the map, which is a problem. It's true. That is Giving true. Giving Pudis time to build up a heavier army of Reaver and Knight. Yeah, but the thing with Reaver and Knight is that it really does become a question of where are you placing them. Yeah, now, they aren't advanced either. Yeah. But maybe he wants to hide them. Hiding this switch could be good until he's got a small number. He might even be thinking of cloaking it into the Akawasu's base. That makes a lot of sense, actually. And, and you're right, there's an Iris, in fact, queued. There's a next unit up after this night. So that's exactly what's happening. Bakawasu, on the other hand, continuing to go pretty much yep. just Fencer Scorcher. A couple of Rippers are put in there to help clean up the glaives, but that's about it. Bakawatsu remains very tight on energy. You only need one or two rippers. True. Because the glaives... The glaives really want to bunch up and kill the fences rapidly. And the rippers discourage that. Okay, so now we've got... Kutus, who doesn't know that there's this army coming around the back. Um... Setting up his army wall, Bakawatsu advances, but in a very spread out way. Using fences more of a ra as a raiding force than a, yeah. like a an army which you can there put it is. somewhere. Well, the iris has been revealed, but to some extent at least. But that is still so a threat. That is no. That's still. It's known, but it's... combat units. Yeah, but it's known. But the thing is, that you can't really deal with it without having screener units. And. At the same time, you know, there's a lot of Bakamatsu's force that is out of position. And it is very good against Fencer. It is amazing against Fencer. Absolutely destroying a lot of them. I don't know how much Bakamatsu realizes that Pudis is... Like, how close Pudis is, like, physically to all their units. But now, okay, it's just... They got 2,000 extra re or 2,000 extra attrition. Their army values now... Well, it's got a 1400 metal advantage. Counterattack potentially coming in from Bakuatsu, but I just don't see it managing to actually do all that much. It can definitely make trouble. Or at least. Okay, these glaives are coming out pretty fast, though. Mm hmm. It can make glaives be made. So, yeah, without the Iris in there, that's 4,000 of cloak bots. Significant. What's in base at the moment? About two thousand rovers, and the rovers are moving out the other direction. And there's Oof. this army on the bottom, on the south, that's been sitting there a while, which could be going in and killing stuff. Okay, it's decided to move in. It is managing to do something. I just it was sitting there for a long time. Much. Yeah, it, it could have pressured the entire south with those fences on Stardust. So this yeah. looks like Bakahasu's <laughs> losing his base. Indeed, that is what it looks like. Unfortunately, Pudis does have their iris up front in front of everything else, but... Yeah, they're using the sort of iris follow order. Oh, which yeah. Which is okay. Ah, oh, fair enough, yeah. 
Regardless, the units come in. There is nothing Black West has to stop them, other than maybe going for a base trade. They do have a reasonably sized army coming in along to Pudis' base, but yeah, Black West's base is done. Pudis' army, however, a bunch of glaives trying to stop this. Doesn't have any imps in they play. Could. That's done. They have to get the rippers in to fight the glaives before the scorchers engage, or the scor too many scorchers are killed. That being said, though, Pudis is kind of open. Potentially. Like, if Bakwasa does this right, there's potential for it. Yeah, it's just a question of whether or not they do it right. Imp is coming out here. And Pudis has a lot of build power there, too. Oh, the Imp could get stunned. Yeah, I'm no, looking at that and thinking, oh, range. that is that is scary, that Imp. Like, so much Pudis could end up losing as a result. I mean, granted, they are moving their main force back slowly but surely. Commander, however, also does have enough upgrades to at least be able to hold their own. But yeah, he switched into Ronan, which is a good playing tactic. Yeah, it helps get rid of the Ripper. And as long as Baku, as long as Pudis keeps their factory up and keeps building out of their factory, that would be a big thing. They'll be fine. But they should be building out of their factory. I don't know why they're not. The Glaives have returned. Glaives have returned. The army is down. Bakuatsu is gone. Put has bought enough time. And that is going to be... That should be game. Bakuatsu throws in the towel. And Putis moves on to the loser semifinals. Well played, Putis. Yeah, overall, that was... Tons of reclaim, tons of income. I mean, it was a risky play at the start, as you pointed out, with all the quick reclaim, but ultimately it did pan out. Yeah, yeah he seemed to like going for the rocks, which gets his conjurers into nice positions. Yep, I mean, he had rocks over over the north, and then over the southeast, he got all the rocks there. And that set them up nicely. I mean, 5,000 extra metal used than Bakuatsu. Especially when Bakuatsu was... I mean, otherwise, Bakuatsu wasn't doing too much, but Bakuatsu was just building a bit less. Like, the economy value, Pudis was really firing up that economy engine after the reclaim, making it quite permanent. So yeah, very well played by Pudis. And we'll see how they fare against Steel Blue, because Steel Blue is a much more challenging opponent. Like Steel Blue is tough. So... But I think Steel Blue right now is what, the top? Yeah, the number four. Although Pudis... Uh, Pudis is already pretty close. So it's not too bad overall. Yeah, they're both blue. Yeah, they're both... Both reasonably equally matched. Okay, and now we're in losers semifinals for real this time. Ah, Crow's using the lobby controls. Mm -hmm. The the tournament controls which forces everyone into the right place. Yep. Which is nice, but I guess it means when we're down to one match at a time. Yeah, we have to keep changing rooms. He's got to make a new room, but that's okay. Certainly worked well for the, at the beginning. Got all the rounds going real fast. Yep. It's and it will be easier for me to do... Well, a little easier. For, I mean, more for it's just LR, L9, LR9. It's like, do you have a consistent naming sch schema so I can more easily search the replays when I post the descriptions? <sighs> yeah. I, th I think it's just nice. You can do, use whatever name is game, but it's nice to have some kind of prefix. Yeah. Um, like something consistent. That's all I ask for. LRS9 or something. I think LR9 is the one that would be used because LR8 LR was used last week and LR7 before yep. that. So just LR number. It's like, sure, I can use that. But some of them are L9. And I was like, seriously? I'm just going to search by player, which is slow. Oh well. Deal with that tomorrow. Anyway, we are on to map bands. 
anvil. Well, Pooja says he's been banging the same two things every round. That's true. So unless someone takes a ban from him. The anvil and scary land. Yep. Advantage is out, so scary is going to be banned. If Prudus likes cloak bots, then it makes sense because Angel and Scary Land are sort of maps where you can expand a bit first safely. Mm -hmm. The first seven or so mixes on both are sort of fairly easy to lock down for each yep. player. So Anvil and Scaryland are the maps that people are likely to pick, which have that property. Although Ravage, Ravage maybe isn't cloak bots. All right, problem solved with the naming schema, at least for this one. But okay, so what's the last one? Vantage. No, Vantage was banned already. That was, Scary the, that was land. Oh, we don't have a last one yet. Yeah, Steel Blue's got the last band. And they are... I don't know what they're going to want. Sparkles. Ooh, Sapphire Shores is a possibility. As is Zed. And I think people are sick of Ravaged. Well, it's up to Pudis. All right, Pudis, it's all on you. Sapphire Shores is okay, as in it is an unusual match to play 1v1, but it works. Yeah, that's true. And it shows a bit of a different skill set, more a larger economy game. We'll see what he does. I mean, I actually could kind of see it with all the reclaim that it has. But that would go for Zed as well. Well, just the team's level of metal extractors you have to that's take true, yeah, back that, line. That's true. And I think Sapphire Shores is pretty, if nothing else. No, we're unravaged. Okay. Ravaged. Ignore everything I said. We're unravaged again. Hope you like Ravaged, because we're getting that a lot. Alrighty. So, with that, we are... Semis. Loser semis. Okay. Huh. I used to having two losers quarterfinal matches in a row. Just timing worked out that way. So yeah, another likely spider mirror, I would think. Potentially. Potentially, unless, yeah. Uh, unless people have plans. Although... It's, you know, it's, it can be a bit spooky going into the spider mirror because the raiding is unusual. Yeah. And the expansion is a bit unusual. Can you do it better than your opponent? And then what do you switch into afterwards? I don't know. I've seen air. I've seen rovers. Prudus is looking at cloakbots. Well, you did say they like cloakbots, and that's not an un untrue statement. See, it works in this map. I mean, cloak versus spider. It's risky. We saw with Golda versus Randy. Ronan, that yeah, Ronan doesn't it's have pretty... much space to move. It doesn't. It's, it's just a very swingy matchup. But it's a smaller map, so you can get Knight or Reaver in there That's sooner true. to deal with Venom. Yep. So that is at least something. So with that, Pudis... Pudis is like now a slight advantage. The Glaive is already going in the Already going into Steel Blue's base, there's nothing other than the commander to defend it, which... Okay, that's more than it sounds like, because there's actually the drone. Yep, yeah, but it looks like Steel Blue's going to block that off. Uh, yeah, maybe. The drone's down, though. But Steel Blue's commander, yeah, Steel Blue's, the commander themselves. Body yeah, blocking it. Venom's going to come out to follow up, so... No constructor from Pudis yet. Rather surprising. They're very focused on the top 
that top construction. Unless they're really but now the commander these. can't take those three mexes without leaving the base open, so it's, it had to wander around there for a bit, slowing down its expansion until the venom came out. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Prudus is checking for the shenanigans. Yep, makes sense. Or Make sure no the weavers map. have decided to go over, or fleas decided to go over. Mm, this is very risky from Prudus. Put up a nice ring of wind generators and metal extractors and just hoping that Steel Prue doesn't decide to send five fleas into the base. Or one flea for that matter. Well, one flea you could probably get a glaive back before too much dies. Uh, that's true, yeah. Speaking of, though. Flea finds. Flea conjurer. finds Conjurer. Glaive finds a flea. I think the Conjurer will live. That's going to be close. That is. It'll be, be like close. 100 HP. Oh, it, no, no. The okay. commander's in there, so the flea doesn't have space to do shenanigans. Right. Oof. Three Glaives. Yeah, with this matchup. Glaive is pretty good against flea. So it's just nice to send a glaive with each of your conjurers. It's pretty cheap to do. I mean, it's good against flea, but it dies to, to that. Those, those few fleas. Yeah, but Venom is quite a bit slower than glaive. That's true. I mean, if you don't see it coming. Yeah, but here's the map. Venoms get to sit on this hill up here. Just bypass the commander, go into the base. Futus lacks radar and anything but the commander. Yeah... And now he's got Think two venoms coming to his base. Be, uh, is that okay? Oh, the imp got spotted. Did not position uh, in time. Would have been next level play to put the imp on the crest of the hill so the venoms run right into it. And that's clearly what Pudus is trying to do. They just didn't do it quickly enough. Yeah. So yeah, now there's two venoms in his base, that's, and all of his units are faster than the venom, which means they won't have good matchups. It's a sort of general rule. Mm hmm. I mean, they but are running into the will, venom. Oh, well, there are the to clean up. There are, and not at especially great cost either. Oh, nicely done with the venom. Just hanging out in the corner of the hill. Oh, okay, that's a brilliant micro from Pudus. That's that's cleaned up. Or sorry, from and Steel Blue, not Pudus. Can actually Go back to killing. Yes, it can. There's nothing that can stop it. Steel Blue just lost their entire army. On 9 health. Oh, sorry. Pudus just lost their entire army. Uh, cannot. Yeah, this one glaive. A single glaive has can deal some damage before it gets stunned and killed. Yeah, better to have two. Well, there's some chance now. Pudus once again. But it will go the over cliffside the cliffside micro. Oh, okay, nice. Finally, Pudus gets rid so, of it, but on Steel the rest Blue. Of the map, Steel Blue and Pudus have been reclaiming through this, which is nice for them. Yeah, unfortunately, Steel Blue is actually having a slightly higher economy. Uh, except, well. Most of it going Steel into frontline defenses. Steel Blue has seven wind generators, and Pudus is down to three and a few solars. So Pudus actually. Still has the energy advantage. Just, just gets the advantage of not having lost all those wind generators. Yep. And also... Uh, two Lotus will beat these Venom. You can't... Yeah. It's only one... Oh, yeah. That's... that's well, fine. okay. Unless he finds a nice angle. Which, I mean, this game is all about finding nice angles for yeah. <laughs> line of sight. You found it. Getting a Stinger in the middle, that's quite nice. A Stinger... That can be the problem with Spider here. It's so close in that a Stinger in the middle can actually put a real dent in the Spider game plan of making a bunch of Recluse. That's true. And that does also give Pudis a lot more of a territory, a lot stronger territory control in the Southwest. Because, I mean, that was basically where they put their economy. They didn't really excess that much because they put it into that Stinger, and now that Stinger is just keeping them safe. Or at least it's a threat. Yes. Um, I think Prudus will lose his expansion on the north eventually because Steel Blue's looking to do some com wars, but against a Contra yeah. and not a real commander. That's a tough call. Honestly, it isn't. 
Oh, well, he's got a commander. Man. No, that's fine. And the conjurer is just building turrets. If the commander really wants to kill all this with some turrets, to pay that cost, then it can happen. But Prudus is expanding in the south. There's quite a few venom coming in, though, which. I think that commander. This number of venom dead. and the stands. That commander's dead. That's commander. an econ commander. Got... No, even with all the lotuses. Lotus. Uh, it's got not not really not anymore. Not with all the stunning, it don't. Oh, but oh, it comes in at least got something like that. Did yeah. So the lotus have bought some time. time. They did, but not enough, I'm afraid. That commander needed to moving back this entire time. It looked like Brutus is trying to kill Steel Blue's commander with this or something. Maybe just kill off this expansion efficiently. Maybe. 18 glaives. I mean, killing the commander would be a good revenge. Brutus just losing their own right off the bat. Seven minutes in. Steel Blue in the other that hand. That was still 2,000 Metal of Venom is pretty good. That's true. That is that is tough to fight. Brutus is trying to do the same thing north, but for only 1,000 Metal. I think it's been spotted, though. Yeah, the Commander Radar would have seen it. He's trying to kill the Commander. Which... What's the Commander got? It's leveling up, so its weapon will change. It has Riot Cannon. Well. Nah, his glaives are dead. Yeah, he could have used those glaives to take out six mexes in the top. Yeah. Might have been a bit better. Ah, it would have been a lot better. Steel Blue now is such a massive economic advantage, and... Budus is really in the back foot. I mean, they did find out that first Venom Raid, but now it's the second one. I don't think there's a whole lot they've got really to deal with it. Even the Weavers, or the Reavers, are not 100% confident are going to be able to get through this. We do have a Conjurer. It looks like it's trying to be cheeky yeah, on the back glaives, lines. Those glaives cost him a lot. For not all that much. Actually, for donating a bunch of metal, paying for the radar, paying for the riot gun. Yeah. Which you have to sort of expect against Cloakie. I mean, I, I didn't even... When, when I was... Actually, it was kind of funny, because as I was saying Riot Cannon, I actually was going to say Riot Cannon unless it was different. Like, I was already prepared to say Riot Cannon before the upgrade was finished. Yeah. Because what else would there be? Maybe Light Particle Beam, but that's the only other feasible option. Oh, Steel Blue's found the room to make a crab. I'm sort not surprised. They have, a, they have a 15 metal per second economic advantage yeah. pretty consistently. Jumping so they got up the plenty. Um, escalation. Yeah, Pudus on the other hand, still Mass and Glaive, Reaver. Not really a whole lot else to work with. Stinger is still being a bit of an issue, although I don't think it's going to be the, that big of an issue ultimately. I mean, the Crab coming in here, it's... It's... Uh, I think Pudus it's going to be able to fight this. Pudus is trying for Cloaked Reaver. 620, Okay, that's fine. Yeah, Cloaked Reaver could find something. Yeah, Still the radar... Blue has radar everywhere. Yep. Okay, there it is. So whether he notices that this disappear is the question. I don't think they they will. They're so focused on this Venom Raid over to the southeast. Just the question of whether these Reavers stay close enough to the Iris, and the answer is no, the Reavers are too slow. Not Iris, the Conjurer. Oh, and the Reaver's not quite able to get in position against these Venoms. But still, the Reaver damage is pretty good. It is, so even with the, the shots the that get time. in... Ah, uh, but two were grouped together. Yeah, if they were less grouped, they would have beaten that. Yep, the Stinger's down too. The crab able to have free reign. Uh, that Crab's going to completely seal. That I means the Venom's over to the south. The Venom's in the center. Crab supporting the Venom's in the center. And then Venom's over to the north as well, because why not? Pudis has kind of run out of steam, I'm afraid. Steel Blue has all of the advantages going in their favor. Oh, Steel Blue making a sparrow just to check if there's anything he's miscounted. Yeah, it could be a spooky switch waiting to come out and kill this crab. No, oh, yeah. I mean, it's a good call. So far, just knights, though. Nothing really too spooky. Hmm. 
One last thing are going down. Once that's gone, the commander can easily set up. Steel Blue just have that much more economy to work with. They have all this reclaim. They have all the metal extractors. They have everything else on the map. And Pudas has cloaked reavers and knights that were quite grouped up. But even so. Even so, they managed to get three or four Venoms for free. And now they're being hit by this crab. It does slow down Steel Blue's advances, but Steel Blue again is so far ahead economically that even losing those yeah, Venoms is not a big deal. There's a second crab coming in, and a third is just finishing. Yeah, I'm trying to dislodge that first one is going to be quite the challenge. Oh, I just, <laughs> I was attacking the ground. Not a bad choice. Crab taking a fair bit of damage, gets rid of half of the re Reavers, the Venoms get rid of the remainder. That crab will be fine. The Knights and Reavers go down and not much else remains for backup force. The a Valiant yeah, effort though, the crabs have to go down. right in around the back. They understand that he wants to not lose the crab. Yeah, that's unfortunate. That is that is understandable. That is exactly what happens. It's unfortunate for Pudis, but Steel Blue... Actually, Steel Blue is still taking a lot of damage. Crab being nailed while it's moving. Not doing it any favors. And unfortunately, Pudis just does have enough of an economy that they can still pump out forces. Now... Steel Blue realizing they have no choice. They must move in. They must finish this off if they want their crab to survive. Granted, they have two crabs in the wings, but still. The one crab that's already in position that is developed, as you said, is going to be useful. Then, well, it's got to stay alive. Oh, nice imp coming in while the Venoms are dealing with the Reavers. Well, it's an attempt, but it's not going to help. Yeah. Steel Blue wins. Pudis throws in the towel, and that is game. And Steel Blue kind of ran the entire game at an advantage. If you look at the graphs, Army Valley was always ahead. Economy Valley was always even or ahead. Metal well, that was early raid. Ahead. That early raid was huge. I'm actually right. really impressed by Pudis' ability to come back from that. Like, they kept their head. They got rid of the Venom. They continued to expand in the meantime. They weren't so unbearably far behind as a result. Yes. A single turret could have done a lot against that raid, though. Wouldn't have done it by itself, but it would have helped a in. bit. I mean, about a bit of well, time. It would, have, it would have given the venom something they had to focus, or they would would die. And mm -hmm. a few glaives around would make the money. Would have focused it. Yeah, or the, yeah, exactly. So it'd be a checkmate situation. They'd be forced to retreat at best, or die at worst. But. That is not what happened. So that is Steel Blue moving on to fight Golda. Getting back into that third place scenario where they love to be so much. Although to be fair, they did they have put they have put Golda on the back foot in the past. So it's not like it's impossible. It's hard, but not impossible. Let's see what's going on with maps right now. Not entirely sure what is going on with maps right now. All right, there we go. Sorry about that. All right, so Steel Blue gets the first ban. Well, I see Google Frog is trying to discuss in chat about 
Venom <laughs> being possibly overtuned. Well, I don't know. They are very good for the spider plan. They are. I mean, especially since... They can since... stop raiders. They can stop raiders. They can exert a bit of pressure into raiders, which makes some sense because they're slower than raiders generally are. Mm-hmm. Well, and I think then they work very well when you're transitioning into whatever you might want to do with spiders. Yeah, well, I agree. Whatever, but many but things. I think Vania has a point that their combat potential might be a bit undervalued because of the because of their stun ability. Because they can't, they can sometimes just take fights for free if they get chains. Yes, they get to if you get a you know overwhelming um, cost in them. Yeah, they they can sort of take fights a bit more for free than units might usually do in that situation. Mm -hmm. And then you get to use them to screen for recluse or crab or whatever you do. Yeah, but it's more that the... I think the biggest issue that's we're seeing now is that when you have a lot of them, like a dozen Venoms, it's difficult to fight into them because they're fast. So a lot of, a lot of skirmishers are just a little bit... like struggle to keep range. And if they get anywhere close to your units, it's done. Those units are dead. Well, which units, though? As in, not right units. Right units are quite good against them. Depends. I mean, if a dozen Venoms against a dozen Reavers, I would expect the Venoms would win. Against a dozen Reavers? No, it's about the same cost. No. They, they get destroyed. The Reavers will, as in, sure, if you make a, a ball of Reavers so that only the edge can shoot, and then the middle ones are just there to get stunned by AoE. Then, yeah, yeah, but I think okay, that's fair enough. I don't know. Still, ha we have, however, seen that happen on several occasions this tournament, where it's not quite a ball of reavers, but still, it's like the reavers, they're still close yeah. enough to each other. It's the the raider advantage. You get you're faster, so you get to group up more. Hmm. When you have twice as many venoms than reavers, then maybe provided the reavers well, then yeah, you can definitely do it provided the reavers. Don't yeah, have a but nice I, I was comparing like nice like line. to like by cost. But I guess it's I a fair point. It would be hard, I think it would be hard to lose equal cost in Reavers against Venom. Hmm. Oh, we're on Sapphire Shores. Well, I guess we couldn't have avoided the entire tournament. <laughs> Hopefully, this this works out pretty well. Kind of. Not super confident, but we'll see. Just because this map is going to be long. Well, got a. He's probably going to want to do lots of raiding because got a likes raiding. That's true, but there's just so much stuff on this map. Yeah. There's, like, there's 20 metal just in that one plateau. There's... Actually, how much reclaim is there? That's a decent chunk. Not a huge amount. On the whole map at the start, only 2,500. Yeah, so it's not, that's not significant. But it's, it's the metal. It's the metal income. Like, look, at, look at these sort mm -hmm. of team game mixes. Yeah, and actually, there's a lot of you can reclaim off energy. Like 200,000 metal, but the energy is huge. Actually, one thing I've noticed is you can tell maps for sort of larger team games tend to be flip symmetric, so the different lanes are fighting evenly against each other. Oh, yeah. So you're saying this is for smaller team games? Which I guess it, I can see like two, well, three, three. Well, this is a mix. It's sort of, it's both. Whereas 1v1 maps and smaller team games are rotationally symmetric. Possibly so there's a difference of between what's going on in different areas of the map. Hmm. And this is this is rotationally symmetric. Both kinds of symmetry. Well, it's got two ramps for each base base, and they're both in the north and the middle. But yeah, the hills in the middle are sort of rotationally symmetric. Oh, I see what you mean. Imagine. Yeah, so it's it's flip symmetry in the very edges, but then the middle is rotationally symmetric. Yeah. A bit of a mix. Huh. 
Okay, God is not going for raiding at all, but just going for expanding as fast as possible. Well, I can't say I blame them. I mean, in a map like this, you might as well just try to keep it alive. That's what he thinks Shieldbot is for. You don't often see him with Shieldbots. I kind of wonder if they're going to switch. I just given the speed of it all. Well, yeah, with this kind of economy, often you expand with something and then switch into, say, air, just to yeah. deal with the distances. But yeah, shield is a good choice for expanding like this. And at the same time, Steel Blue's deciding going forward in their expansion is the better option, which I understand, though... I'm not sure that's going to give them a whole lot of... Well, actually, I guess it kind of does, because they get the lower plateau, secure that, and then they can take the upper plateau at their leisure. Yeah, there are some little funny ramps that bots can take up here, though. That's true. Yeah. This right here, kind of like this one section right here. And, oh, it's just like a bot. Yeah, this one ramp right here. There's another one right here. I think... I have kind of one right here. I think those are symmetric. Yeah, there's one here. So the economy is fairly even for expansion, actually. Because Steel Blue hasn't had any units come to his side of the map. Yeah. So, so he has to sort of expand his ledger. The difference between Gode is really invested in this wind generation on the high part. Which is actually... Yeah, it's 1 to 2.5, so that makes sense. Um, one's pretty good. It's not better than... Well, it is better than solar, actually. Oh, yeah. It's... it's yeah, it's better. It's as good as solar yep. when the wind so, is as low as possible. Yeah. The tall part is quite good for that. Nah, is this higher than one? No, one is the cap. One is the cap. One is the highest the minimum can be. Ooh, nice. Yeah. Nice use of radar, though, seeing the Reaver in position, stopping the band. Well, stopping some of the bandits, the rest of the bandits will be able to get behind it. Yeah, though... one Reaver doesn't stop everything. No. But there's some Reavers coming down the ramps. There are, and the Stardust is here. So it's still a threat. And. I wonder if that Stardust kills them. It might not. It's only They're going to get done. out of range. Yeah. That would be a pain now to deal with. Especially as it does start, because the whole heat mechanic hey, started fully heated up. Shield. Oh, yeah. He could there it have is. made glaives. Glaive would work. I wonder what he's doing. I don't know if they could make anything. It feels like it's they're really cutting it close on defenses right now. Well, look, he's got five conjurers here. Yeah, they can, that's true. That's true. They can make something. They're certainly trying. But meanwhile, God is getting to expand down onto the the white bit, the middle bit. Yeah, onto the sandy bit that's so normally why underwater. Is the shield factory? I don't know. God is going for the earth switch. Yet. And God is getting re and getting ravens, so yep. that's a God commander snipe. Waiting to happen. Possibly a factory snipe. Whoa. Bandits getting rid of the caretakers. That is huge. Forget the uh, ravens. Why that the is. Why are the caretakers bunched up like that? Well. I don't know, but that certainly didn't do them any favors. It's that is that was our dead caretakers now. Ex caretakers yeah, making bandit and glaive. Well, interesting choice. Yeah, he's got this. He's got this stardust plan where he makes a little row of stardust to the front, but it hasn't stopped them getting other areas. Perhaps we could use move the reaver to not be also with stardust. Yeah, well, the problem, I think, is more that it's not that it stopped them, it's that they, they got in already. Like, those bandits are the bandits that got yeah. in off that first raid. That just, they passed by the Stardust and stayed alive. Not to mention, Ravens just kill Stardusts. And now, if you just pump out Ravens, it can be very destabilizing. God, they can turn his economic advantage that he got from all this expansion and raiding. That's exactly and what's you happening. Can pick off Reavers and Stardust to allow the rain to keep happening. Yep, and that's exactly what we're seeing as the bandits come over to the north side of the map. Glaive's trying to stop them, but can't quite. The Reavers are out of position, having lost many of their number to the Ravens. And that is just four, five bandits. Why not get rid of the Reaver? The bandits have more value. They can kill more Mexes. And Steel Blue ends up 
like, half the economy with... They don't have caretakers, they almost don't even need them. So Golda... Sheesh, they have, they have everything now. They're two-thirds of the map. 60 metal to 32. Finally getting some yeah. contest as far as the Ravens go, but not much. It's the level of expansion that 1v1, well, the current pool of 1v1 maps don't generally test. Indeed. Although it is, there's more to it than Comet Catcher, maybe. Comet Catcher's all the way to expansion and rating. This has, you know, there's wind, there's some choke points you can use. Yeah, I, I do agree. This is definitely, if we're going to, if I had to pick between this and Comet Catcher, I would pick this every time. Just because no, it's more interesting that is way. good too, but it's this has got a few more dimensions. Yeah, and I, I really appreciate that. At any rate, none of those dimensions are ones along which Steel Blue has found a whole lot to work with. I mean, they do have the well, actually they have the Raiders. They do have some anti air to at least be of some use, but Golda just has way too many, way too many caretakers, way too much production potential. I just don't know yeah. how it's supposed to go any other way, honestly. I mean, unless... At this oh, stage, at this sort of density... Really? Yeah, I don't know. He's just free to turn his economic advantage into Ravens. I mean, we're seeing more and more... More and more Reavers come in as the Vandals help push away the Ravens, but... Vandals aren't super so I'm not sure what the shield bot factory is for. Steel Blue making another clumped bunch of caretakers. I'm well, well. making Vandals. I mean, that's sort of what it's for, I guess. Just have AA that stays alive. Not yeah, like it's Swift, gonna matter though. Swift would contest air. Yeah, it would. Be my thought. Well, it's a and midpoint. point. even Swift would, you know, Swift would chase down lone bandits that get into the back as well. Very true, but a moot point. As Steel Blue is done Gorda has taken the game and that is going to be that so with that steel blue gets third place and Gorda moves on to fight randy try to get first place try to win this final week of the lobster roll series so we have a short break before that happens and then we'll be back so stay tuned <laughs>